Hey everyone, Brian from IGN here alongside John Ryan. Hi there. And James Faulkner. Hello. Hi. We're here to talk about Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, mm -hmm. specifically the single player portion. I put up my review on day zero and I gave it a 9.1, as you can see right there. I think it's amazing. We're going to talk about just the single player part for right now. So mm -hmm. before we jump into it, let's go ahead and roll the verdict from the review. The way Sledgehammer has integrated movement into every aspect of how we fight has gone above and beyond. By designing the levels and objectives in the campaign, co-op, and multiplayer to facilitate those new mechanics, Advanced Warfare is granted a weight and importance that changes how Call of Duty feels. This is a Call of Duty game to its core, but one that rehashes as little as possible while still retaining its strengths. So let's talk about the gameplay. Yep, yep. I want right away, real quick, just your first impression. Uh, I was very impressed. Um, it was far more varied than I was expecting, and I also, it was far more than what I had come to expect with Call of Duty games, where it's just run down the hallway, shoot some bad guys, run down the hallway, Follow shoot the guy. some bad guys. Follow, Follow the guy, the guy. Yeah. But we've, we've, talked, we've talked about that a lot, where like the last couple of Call of Duties have come down to that, and this had the moments where you kick in the door and everything goes into slow-mo, and, and it's very... But they the Call changed Duty those up enough yes. that, that I was like, okay, we're going to breach the door, and oh, what happened there? Or or the part where you actually put like these little like sensors on the wall, and then you shot people through the wall. Oh, that was great. Creative breaching. Yeah, yeah creative exactly. Just a little side note. Sometimes it's great because you breach and you set up, and it's like, here's a mute charge. We're going to oh, turn off the sound. We're going to sneak in. Best but thing. sometimes you, you breach, and you just kick the door down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I figure like, right. that's like your only two <laughs> options. You're either going to do it super stealthily, or... <laughs> Like, I love how the prompts would come up. It was like, press square to open the door. And then it's just like, square. I was expecting, like, you know, like, but no, it's... <laughs> smash! <laughs> toss! So, great. I gave the game its amazing score, mainly because of the multiplayer, but I still had a lot of fun yeah. with the campaign. Yeah. Uh, the the mission variety is what I'm... Is what yeah. the main Yeah, thing absolutely. Was. One of my favorite first-person shooters is Crisis, the first mm -hmm. one. Yep. And it gives you tons of variety when you see enemies, you approach them, and you're like, how do I want to take these dudes down? Or do I even totally. want to at all? And Advanced Warfare, some of its missions follow the, you know, you're going to follow this guy down follow the line. Him, shoot but bad some guys of them continue. really step out of the comfort zone and do new things. Yeah, I was really surprised. I mean, there Let's was that. About, I know what we're going to talk about. Yeah, we're going to talk about Stealth that. Stealth level? Yeah! yeah. Oh, gosh, so, so good. Um, well, it was, it was a, it's a well crafted level, but it felt honestly like while we were playing through it, it felt more like a Splinter Cell game than it did Call of Duty. Like, I have expected mm -hmm. Michael Ironsides to be like, I've got to get this back to him, too. And they, they all, they also, where does that come from? Seriously. <laughs> they also introduced new, uh, like, action, a new mechanic in terms of, like, the grapple pull where you, like, spike people through the chest uh, with, so with, with the grapple. Guys, you straight up do the scorpion, you know, get over here, yeah. but without the Did yelling because you you're stealthy. Did you ever kill a, an AST with one of those? No. Oh, my God, it's so amazing. Tell like, me. you you grapple, and then you yank, and everything goes slow motion, you, like, Yank the dude backwards out of his giant exoskeleton, and then like you, it, the camera like pans so it's this way. So you're looking at him, and he's just like whoa, and then you just crush his face into I the sidewalk. I clearly it's so messed amazing. up and should have given so this good. game a ten. You chose so poorly. But one of the most impressive things about that mission is that Call of Duty is not a stealth game, yeah. no. and stealth is hard to do anyway in mm -hmm. a game about stealth. So in a game that's not about stealth, to mm -hmm. attempt it and succeed mm -hmm. is awesome. Yeah. It well, also does really cool things with the uh, like the sniper drone mission stood out to me. Yeah. Yes, uh, it you know you are sort of shooting things from like a robot in the sky. We've done that before, yep. but they kind of give it a cool context. You're like spying on people and sort of helping yep. your your uh, fellow soldiers. Yeah, it, it, felt, it felt like a kind of different game where it, you, they could have expanded that and done multiple things with like that drone, but there was just it, one small sequence. Right. And then you were drawing yeah. people out onto like the parking garage with the uh, the alarm on the car. Yeah. And then you had to, then they're like, okay, here's a difficult shot. You got to take out three guys in a row. I feel like it's something that you touched on uh, in your written review, which I really like the idea of, and it's that you basically get to make your own QTEs. Like you create your own set piece sequences. Um, right. Like that bit with the AT or the AST guy, like I yanked him out of the thing. No, you guys didn't experience mm -hmm. that. I didn't experience the thing where you shot down the gunship. Like it, it's very cool, and you can kind of create your own huge events. Which is something that I haven't seen in a Call of Duty in a long, long time. Exactly. Yeah, Call of Duty has always done a good job of making their, uh, like, sort of putting the players into this crazy action. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but you feel like you were maybe the start of a chain reaction or something. Right. In this, you were part of the process all exactly. along. And the one thing, the other really impressive thing before we move on here, was that uh, even in the missions where you sort of are following someone, sort yep. of in a straight line, this, the exosuit 
sort of enhances how you play. And yeah, the movement totally. is really cool. And so even though you are doing that linear thing, you still are playing differently. Well, that's the thing. The, the, the level design themselves feel much more open than anything else. Like, you know, like I said, in the last few Call of Duties that I've played, I mean, the last one I actively chose was like Black Ops 1 probably, but it was still run down the hallway, shoot a bad guy, run down, like literally just like corridors and shooting people. It was almost an on-rail shooter. Whereas here, you know, you're going up, you're going down, you're going around and sideways. Like, it's very, very open, and I, I really got to commend them for doing that. There was, a, there was a section where you could go forward with the rest of your troops, or you, we found a, uh, a turret that was, like, hanging back, like, really far away. Mm -hmm. But you could still use that turret to, like, like highlight enemies and it would send out missiles to go kill those guys. Yep. You didn't have to do that. It was just there for you to use. Yeah, so it does a good job of giving you player choice. And on the, the missions that are more traditional, mm -hmm. they're still fun because the exosuit is awesome. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk about the story. So developer Sledgehammer Games was really touting this story. They got Kevin Spacey, you know, top Hollywood Spacey, talent in there. Spacey, though. Oh, God. Yeah, so one thing I really want to touch on is that Spacey was in the game a lot. Yes. A lot more than Which I thought he would be. Which was very surprising Yeah, tell me, me, you like the Spacey? I like, I, I like it as Spacey. Tell me about the Spacey. I like it as Spacey. Um, I, you know, as <laughs> with any action movie, I'll say, because, I mean, really, that's kind of what the story of this Call of Duty game is. Um, you, you've got some of those moments where you're just kind of like, oh, Spacey. Oh, Spacey. Exactly. Like the guy comes off the screen. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. Who else but Spacey? <laughs> yeah. um, but I, on the whole, I thought it was very enjoyable. Um, yeah. What about you, James? Uh, there are moments in the, in the story where he tends to be a... Uh, the mouth of exposition. He's just he's there just to tell you about the world and like what's going on. Everyone's the mouth of exposition. In yeah, the first I mean, half I mean, that yeah, though. No. Yeah, and... It kind of it kind of sucks. I specifically pointed some of that out. There, you want your characters to feel believable because mm -hmm. like characters are what move a story forward. Right. Yeah. And very early on, Advanced Warfare makes the characters feel like they're there to deliver plot to you, the player, mm -hmm. even if that means sacrificing how those characters work together yeah. in their world. And it makes them feel like they're sort of like artificial. Well, but no, oh, I'm sorry, no, no, go ahead. please, no, you go ahead. I that doesn't mean that the characters weren't well acted or performed, right. especially you know Troy Baker's. Uh, voicing of Mitchell, who's the main character, and Kevin Spacey as Jonathan Irons. They did mostly a fantastic job, minus well, a few cheesy moments. Well, I mean, that's the thing, too, is, like, no matter how good an actor is, it's all about what material that they're given to work with, too. Right. Like, you know, I think, honestly, on the whole, I think the story itself is pretty well-crafted. You know, there are definitely, like, stereotypical, tropey moments, like, curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal, sir. <laughs> and, you know, we all, you know they're coming from the second you start the campaign. Right. But it's okay, because they get you through those moments in a way that you're still on board with it, you're still having fun, and you're like, you know what, no, it's fine. That was kind of schlocky, but I'll buy right. it. Right. Like, There's actually some interesting stuff that they did uh, with the story where they didn't actually include everything in the game. Like, a lot of the intel in the game actually unlocks additional things about that world. Yeah, um, like the power trailer. Yeah, example, yeah a, lo a lot of the, the stuff game. that they used in the trailers. Yeah, like the promo materials, the a lot of that, just not in the game. Yeah, oh, it's, in, it's in the game in terms of if you find the intel, you can watch it. Sure, but it. it's buried in a menu, you yeah. won't just come across it. Yeah, but yeah, I think it, that was kind of cool where they, they, they use the promotional materials to actually kind of like build a mythology or like some, yeah, I mean, a little bit of world it, building, kind of. Sort of gave you the sense of, of the world that you're going to be inhabiting for the next six hours. Yeah, and, and let's talk a little bit about the premise. This is about 40 years into the future. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sort of, uh, you know, the weapons are all futuristic, but not so much so that you couldn't really see it it's happening. It's a believable yeah. future. It's not like Blade Runner, let's say, where everything is like weird Egyptian skylines and robots. Right. And it also takes a lot of cues from modern day news headlines. You yeah, know, there totally. are There are weapons of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. uh, I, drone I, I pointed warfare. out in my review, there's drones, you know, Congress is kind of falling apart and being inactive. And, well, that's never going to change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm uh, um, But yeah, I thought that even though the execution wasn't perfect on it, it sort of was just grounded because it, oh, absolutely. it worked with real world modern. Yeah, I feel like the world that they've, that the writers created within the game itself, like, I think they did a great job, you know? I mean, you drop into any mission and, like, even just overhearing radio chatter, you're like, yeah, I believe that's actually occurring. Like, that makes sense. Like, I could see this being the future of warfare. And it was, it was also interesting seeing, like, you go into these areas that you would maybe see in other games, like Afghanistan or something, but it was, like, developed in, like, like, yeah. like, like new, like, it felt new because... Atlas was coming in and rebuilding these areas because they had a vested interest to do so. Yeah, right. I mean, seeing and of course, Baghdad that works perfectly, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, seeing Baghdad in 50 years, I was like, huh. And it's like not something I would have ever thought of, but it's like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, new Baghdad is in the game. It looks awesome. It's it's like this awesome utopia. Yeah. And it's like, you know what? Okay, sure. Maybe if like it's not a future that I'd ever imagined actually happening. But I was like, maybe if the right people came and got together and made it happen, sure, why not? 
We can't talk about the story without talking about the end. And we're not going to spoil it. No spoilers. We're just going to say, I found it disappointing, and I found it to be a little cheesy, especially from some of the actors' performances. I want to know what you guys think really quick. Yeah, so the end level is kind of cool because you're doing this cool soul, but it, and it ends up being just like, oh, oh, it ends up being like the standard like chase somebody. And it's then, it's and then a very James Bondian ending. Yeah. It's just like, escape, kill the bad guy, the end. And yeah. I don't know about you guys, I, I wanted just like another three minutes of closure on that. Because it's just kind of like, we've killed the bad guy and saved the day. Cut to credits, the end. It's like, okay. I agree. It's a pretty great story, cool setting, mm-hmm. uh, a few problems, uh, kind of an abrupt ending, but still definitely worth a play. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So a lot of people come to Call of Duty and they just play multiplayer right away. They mm-hmm. completely skip single player. I want to talk about whether you think the single player is worth playing. Yeah. Yeah? I I think yes and yes. Um, I think it's a good talking point because a lot of people do just jump straight into multiplayer and never take a look at the campaign. Mm -hmm. But I will also say yes to the fact that they should play it. Um, This is the first Call of Duty I've I've actively wanted to see the end of, uh, probably in four games. I would Uh, agree with that. Since Water Warfare 2. Really, I've been, I have not been like, oh yeah, I got to see how this ends. Yeah, I just, same. I was super into Modern Warfare, and I, I guess Black Ops and Modern Warfare too. But Black Ops was pretty Modern good Warfare too. Three, Black Ops Two, yeah. Ghosts. I oh, wasn't God, super no, into. Was, no, I didn't really care you. how it ended. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, and it's, uh, they always say play the campaign first. You get used to maybe the the control scheme for that particular game. Yep. In this game, it's very true. You need absolutely need to uh, like play it. You like you need to like understand how the boost like the boosting works. And that helps you transition into multiplayer. Yeah, I mean, you can right? pick it up on the fly if you jump into multiplayer. But, I mean, as as horrible as this is going to sound, you know, the tagline for the game is very right. Power changes everything. Like, mm-hmm. I jumped into my first wah, or second. Wah, I know, I know. Wah. I'm going straight to hell for that <laughs> one. Uh, but, no, I jumped into my first multiplayer match after, you know, a little bit of the campaign. Like, mm-hmm. really just after the first mission. And I had no idea what was going on. Yeah, it's, it's weird because a lot of times you'll be like, oh, the single player trains you for the multiplayer. But... You're really just shooting people, right? Yeah. Right. But in this, you have all these exo abilities to worry about. Exactly. I shouldn't say worry about. They're really cool. You, you and they're, get they're, to manage them. Yeah, right. But the one gripe I had with the single player campaign is that you don't get those exo uh, boost and dash abilities. Yeah, in every you can't level. Like, choose your own loadout. Right. So sometimes you'll have like, oh, a grapple and an invis and like a sonic emitter thing. And that's all cool. They're yeah. all fun. But... In the multiplayer, you always have them, and so you're used to that freedom. Mm-hmm. Yep. Single player does give you some training, and it lets you kind of transition into multiplayer. Well, I think it, it wants to force you to become familiar with those specific things. So, like in the mission, where in the fusion mission or fission mission, where they're like, "All right, you've only got overdrive and or no, not overdrive. You've got a uh, sonic uh, disruptors, and you've got stim back." Um, so you just have to get used to using those so that when you do jump into the multiplayer, you're then like, oh, okay, so here's this, here's this, here's this, this, and like you automatically kind of are geared into the best time to use Right, those. because a lot of those exo powers you get are uh, maybe single tweaked a bit for single player, but are also in multiplayer. Yes. Like a lot of them aren't because they'd be completely overpowered. Like yep. there's an AOE stun that you can use. but It's, it's massive radius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, yeah, they Slow are. Slow motion. They, they teach <laughs> Maybe you, not. They teach <laughs> you about uh, like the cycling grenades, which like that's a concept that's like you have to think about. You're like, okay, I know it starts on EMP and then two clicks it goes to, I think it's stun. Right. Uh, like that's a good like training rather than having to learn on the fly in multiplayer where you have seconds to react and where otherwise you wouldn't. Exactly. Right. And also, it's a fun campaign. Yeah. Yeah, I was just going to ask about that. We're talking about the campaign as a training grounds for multiplayer, and that's mm-hmm. fine. A lot of people will treat it like that, but on its own, <laughs> as a you know, you know, unique gameplay and levels and a good story. Uh, just yeah. looking at it from that yeah. perspective, absolutely. I think like you know, like I said, it's the most fun I've had with a Call of Duty campaign probably in about three years. Um, you know, the I'll say I said it before and I said it again. It, it has shades of Splinter Cell and Halo and other stuff in it. With these huge different games that are not what I think of when I think Call of Duty. I think it does a great job of folding them all into it. So here's people were asking me in the comments of the review, and this is what I said, and, I, and I'm going to stick to it. If you only want to play the campaign, I don't think the game is worth a purchase just for the campaign. Right. If you are there to play, if you are interested in maybe coming back and you're looking for something to reel you in, mm-hmm. and you also want to play multiplayer, absolutely play the game and get the game. Mm-hmm. It's just the the story is there. There's good acting. Uh, enough of the levels are varied enough to be you know new and unique things we haven't seen before, and it's just a good time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are definitely moments where all three of us were laughing. Like not in the, like 
there's a, a specific thing on the last level where you start out and you see one of the giant mech suits hanging below a helicopter just swinging back and forth. <laughs> and that made us that made us laugh for no particular reason. Well, we'd Other, also been playing f- for like six hours yes. straight. It is silly. The game does some silly things, but it it's it, an action it, it com- movie. It commits to them and it it's it knows what it's doing, and so it's okay. It gets away with those things. Exactly. And that's the thing. It, it's well, except for press F to pay respects. That doesn't get it. Doesn't see. Get a, I disagree. I think that was totally done with a wink and a nod to the audience. I think I that's just kind of like, hey. I don't think it look was. At this. Look at this. You look what you got to do now. Moments like that aside, uh, campaign is awesome. And you probably should check it out. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. All right. Thank you, John Ryan. Thank you, James Faulkner. And thank you for watching. Please let us know what you think of Advanced Warfare in the comments below. And for everything on Advanced Warfare, keep it right here on IGN.